As part of strategic planning and other processes, organizational leaders, such as members of the board, often spend lots of time crafting statements about mission and vision. These are very worthy processes because the leadership should clarify what the organization values and where it's going. While this is instructive, seldom is anyone truly held accountable for achieving a mission or a vision. What I'd like to do is redefine the word vision and that the organization's leadership, specifically the board, articulate this new vision and then hold the staff accountable for achieving that vision. In this context, the words that describe the vision must be clear because some people's jobs will depend on accomplishing that vision. So, let me talk about what I mean about a vision. This is important because although vision statements are often inspiring, they can also be vague. So I must mean something a bit different from traditional vision statements. Think about your organization. Most board meetings deal with how well the organization is running. While this is important, especially when disaster strikes, your organization isn't there just to run well, and you as a member of the board are doing only part of your job if all you are interested in is seeing that the organization doesn't fall apart during your term of office. Why does your organization exist? The answer should be that it addresses a need in the community. It exists because it can assemble the resources to create a benefit for some people or change something that needs to be changed. The board is the part of the organization with the authority and responsibility to articulate that benefit or change. And then the board must hold the staff accountable to make it so. I see that most boards consider doing this as secondary to attending to the fires that are burning and other operational issues. But this is the highest purpose of the board, and it may not be an easy job. Let me talk about this business of a vision. We are talking about a wonderful capacity of humans. In our minds, we can visualize something that does not now exist, but might sometime in the future. It might be a building, or a community program, or a plot for a story, or simply a pizza that I will bake for my family on Friday night. What makes it a vision is that someone can imagine it or visualize it, and then sometimes it might become a reality. This ability to envision the future and then to carry out some process to cause it to materialize is a very powerful capacity. It is wonderful to learn to become effective at using this capability. So when I talk about describing a vision or visualizing or envisioning, I am talking about expressing a clear description of a future that does not yet exist, but could. The greater the clarity of the vision, the greater the possibility that it will become a useful reality. The fact that I have a vision of a baked pizza served on Friday night does not make it happen, but unless I begin with that simple vision, the pizza cannot happen. The process associated with the pizza is well known to my family, but it has elements that are true for all creative projects. First, the vision is clearly expressed. Someone in my family says, How about a pepperoni pizza on Friday night? My family knows how I make a pizza, so these words clearly describe the vision of the pizza and the event. Next, I say, OK. At that point, I have made a decision to proceed with making the pizza. And I have also announced my commitment to the project. There are still many steps to go. Assemble the ingredients, knead and retard the dough, cook the sauce, dress and bake the pies, invite any guests, and so on. 
but all of that unfolds fairly predictably once there has been a commitment to accomplishing the vision. In the context of the work of the board, the vision is what the board decides is required to address the need for which your organization exists. That vision is a clear description of a future that does not yet exist, but could. Here is the real strength of human creativity. Dinner on Friday night does not have to be a pizza. That lump of clay can become whatever the sculpture visualizes. The only cost of developing a vision is your time, your understanding of the need, and your imagination of the possibilities. Because a vision seems cheap and completely fluid, people often treat the vision as trivial. It is not. It is at the stage of envisioning that anything is possible. The desired future then begins as a creative process of envisioning. A vision is easily and inexpensively altered. The act of envisioning can involve many people. Researching and collaborating on the vision and then testing the vision with the community should be a big part of informing the wisdom of the board. As a board, you have an important role to play. You may be depending on professional planners, on consultants, on architects, and on your staff to advise you which vision is the best to address the community's need. At some point you will either rubber stamp that advice or you will truly understand the options and you will make a decision. There is enormous power in that decision. It is the consequence of that decision that resources will be committed and the work of accomplishing that vision begins.